<laughs> yeah, I feel massive. I feel like I should have some symbols. See you later, buddy. Look after yourself. See you, Chris. Awesome. Cheers for coming out to see us, Chris. Well, folks, look what I've got. So this is the brand new BMW, again, R1250R Sport. Now, look at this. I'm going to, again, I'll jump off near the end or maybe in the middle of the vid and I'll do some off-bike pictures and video of it so we'll get a little look around. But for the time being, this is going to be the first ride. So here we are, just met Chris there for a couple of cups of splash at Rikers over in Dorking. Just picked this up this morning, had a quick splat along the uh, motorway to get here. Pretty powerful, pretty impressive beast. This new engine, the R1250 engine, is amazing. I love it. It just pulls and pulls. And anyway, you can see in the dash, it's a slightly different style dash to the one we normally get. But apart from that, it's exactly the same, apart from one thing. And it's this, the sport function. Whoa. Now this, hit the down button. Look at that. Now that there, it shows you how much traction control you're using. And it says brake, but it's basically how much deceleration you've got, you know. But the best bit, it's got a lean angle sensor. <laughs> Let's go test it out. So as usual, got this set in Dynamic Pro. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, gee whiz. The pull on this 1250 engine. Oh, man, it's amazing. How anyone can say there's hardly any difference between this and the 1200, I just don't understand. Because to me, it's night and day, it really is. I'm in fourth gear at 4,000 revs. And this thing will just pull and pull and pull and pull. Right, what time am I at? I am at 10 to 1, night duty tonight. Uh, yeah, let's go to back country roads. I want a bit of a test. Lean angle, lean angle. What are we going to get? Ooh, ooh 34. <laughs> I don't even know what's a good lean angle. But that felt fun. Oh, this is a four. We made this a 40 now. We're going to get to the stage now, the reducing speed limits, where you're going to end up having to push the bike around. Motorways are getting reduced down to 50s and 40s. National roads are coming down to 40s and 50s. Yawn. But anyway, folks, welcome to the channel. Those of you who are new, welcome. Hang around, check out some other vids. Don't forget to smash that subscribe button. Really does help me out. Those of you who are regular viewers, welcome back. Good to see you again. As ever, folks, all you Patreon clans folk out there, I love you lots. There's been quite a surge, actually, in the Patreon of late, so thank you very much, people. I really do appreciate it. You're, uh, you're helping to improve the channel, because I was able to upgrade the camera to the Hero 7 here and a couple of other little bits and bobs which are coming over the next few vids so your support really does help massively thank you very much but anyway back to the task in hand the BMW R1250R what is it? well basically naked bike, no fairing a big 1250 boxer engine right down there do you know what, is this shaft drive? yeah I think it is shaft drive I haven't got the spec to hand at the moment, but I'll put it up on the screen now. And this is my first ride vid. I'm going to do at least one, maybe two more vids on this. So we'll be doing a little trip over into Wales next week. So we'll get some good twisty action on that, as well as some uh, touring. So I'm hoping to give this a good thorough test, because obviously I'm going to be commuting this week in and out of London. So we should get a good feel for this bike, see what it's all about. Massive thank you to the folks over at BMW Motorrad UK for their support here. They reached out to me actually and offered this. Normally I go to Coopers in Tunbridge Wells and they give me various bikes to, to try when Helga's in having a service. But this time it's BMW themselves, so thank you very much. Much appreciated. Oh, that engine! Oh my god, that engine's amazing. 
It is so smooth. I love it. This is a brand new bike. This has literally been run in and that's it. It feels small for me. Six foot three, 20 stone. That's a uh, few Americans and foreigners out there. It's about 280 pounds, 125 kilograms, I think it is. Uh, yeah, a bit of a bloater. But you know, for me, I feel quite tucked up on this at the moment, coming straight off of the big GS. Uh, there is no screen, but the wind buffeting isn't bad at all. And considering I've got a, a peaked lid, it doesn't feel bad. I do feel like I've got my knees around my ears, which isn't always a good thing. Again, suspension's in the dynamic auto setup, so that obviously constantly changes depending on what the surface of the road's like, how bumpy it is, how flat it is, what speed you're going, how heavy you are. The bike is constantly weighing all that up to determine what the best suspension setup's going to be at that time. And I have the bike set in dynamic pro engine mode. Into the national. Oh my god. Yeah, that's plenty fast enough. Yeah, it's getting quite windy now. The bike is fast enough, people. Oh my god. I won't tell you what speed I was at, but this thing's still pulling like a train. That is phenomenal. I like this. I like this a lot. That quick shifter is as smooth as I think I've ever felt on a boxer engine. That is amazing. A little bit clunkier going up, but coming down, that is like butter. Right, I had a few people ask about the various different modes and why I don't test them, why I'm always just in dynamic for the engine mode and the suspension mode. Well, my reasoning for that is, is that's how I always ride. I like a nice firm suspension setting and I don't see the point in me riding a, a bike in anything other than its optimum engine performance level. That's how I, what I ride, that's, how, that's what I like. However, as pointed out by a few people, there's plenty of people out there who um, who maybe wouldn't. They maybe don't want the jerkiness of the full dynamic throttle response. Or maybe they ride too up, or they're looking for a more comfortable ride. So, in the interest of fairness, I'm going to give it a go. Oh, she was. So, let's change the suspension. So, I'm in dynamic. Right, okay. So, right, now I'm in road setting for the suspension. Can already feel that's a little bit softer. Let's change the engine mode. Let's put it in road mode, which it is. Okay, so it's now in road mode. Yeah, straight away you can, you notice that on the throttle response. You have to wind it on a little bit more to to get anything. We'll just go for the overtake here. Still fast, but it's just not quite as instant as the Dynamic, Dynamic Pro. The ride feels lovely actually in road setup. Just feel like you're gliding along. Oh, this is a 40, isn't it? Those brakes feel lovely, not grabby at all. Uh, so up changing with the quick shifter, first to sort of third gear, quite clunky, but still smoother than, than my GS, than Helga. It's lovely, it just holds a line beautifully. Definitely notice the difference in weight. This feels, you know, a different level of freedom really. It's lovely. That engine, oh, the pull. The pull on the 1250 is just amazing. That's absolutely what this boxer engine needed. The 1200's great, I love it. But there was always a real distinct difference between the 1200 GS and something like, say, the, the 1290, the KTMs or the Ducatis. Actually, I've, I've not ridden them, but I can only say what other people are saying, and that is they have that hooligan element that the BMW lacked. But with this pull on this now, oh, for me anyway, it's like the missing link. 
the one little thing I said in the last video, I've got this real need to get back on sports bikes. I don't know where it's come from, but I just, I want to get back on sports bikes again and give them another bash. I can't wait to try the new S1000RR. So I've not ridden the RR since 2010, when it first came out, because it was between carrying on with the Jixa, or I was in two minds to buy the new S1000RR at the time, back in 2010. To, uh, you know, eventually to do my trip on actually. Oh, 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 oh my god, this is just road mode and it still pulls. Okay, let's be sensible here. Let's whack it in. Right, rain mode. Yeah, rain mode. Again, it still pulls, but it's just not. It's just another step down and the delivery, you know, and the urgency. So it's not it's not slow by any stretch of the imagination, but you you have to really twist the throttle quite some to, um, to get it to do anything. Right, that's as much as I'm going to test that because I want this back into Dynamic Pro. Yes, not actually been looking where I was going, reading any road signs. So where are we? Oh, there she is. <laughs> dynamic Pro, baby. Yeah. So this only has road or dynamic in the suspension settings. And again, it's set in auto. So if you chuck a pillion on the back of this, it'll automatically soften up a little bit, whether you're in road or dynamic. It'll automatically soften up. Depending on what load you're carrying. So let me whack this back into dynamic. That's it back in dynamic. That's the beauty of this system. It's, it's great, you can change the engine modes and the suspension modes on the hoof whilst you're moving. It's great. Okay, this will do for just now. Let's get us on some backcountry twisty roads. So let's see what she's like on the twisties. I am busting for a pee. Cracking bike to ride through the twists. It's like a GS that's been down to the gym and maybe had a few uh, enhancements. I really need a pee. Oh, come on! Ooh. Pull off this engine. I love it. That's somebody's house. Can't do it in there. side road up here. Yeah, there is. Let me go down there somewhere. Alright, I think a lot of us have been in this situation before, folks, haven't we? Well, you need to go for a little waz. Oh, that is better. Folks, I'm bringing this up because I saw something the other day that made me think, hmm, the bloke's got a point. I'd stop for fuel somewhere on the A29, I think it is. I'd stop for fuel there, out in Surrey. And while I was having a quick sani, a couple of bikers turned up for some fuel. And one of them jumped off and scampered off the side of the road to have a quick slash. We've all done it. We've all been there. I've just been there. Being on the bike, the vibration on the old bladder. you got to go, haven't you? Well, unfortunately, this must happen a lot because the geezer in the, the house next door to the petrol station wasn't particularly happy about bikers stopping and using his house and his neighbours' houses as a quick natural break and he came out and had a right ding dong with this uh, biker and I thought to myself that bloke's got a point actually the biker was perfectly polite about it he was alright about it there was no blows nothing like that but it just made me think there because I was needing a pee and I thought well you know what we can't just stop at the side of the road go for a slash so hence why I just gone down the side track there and found a field 
Oh, that's a lot better. But anyway, here endeth the lecture. The other thing that I noticed was the GoPro had run out of battery. So I really hope, I'm really hoping you caught some of what went on earlier. This is lovely. What a great bike to ride in these twisty uh, in these twisty country roads. Feels really good through the twists and turns. I reckon with an aftermarket can, this would sound lovely. Into the nationals, yeah! -ah. It's a different feeling to the big old adventure bikes. You know, even though this is the same old engine, you've just got a bit more excitement with this. I think it's because you're you're not cocooned by the big screen and the big fairing with the bodywork. You just feel you feel like you're on a bike. I know that's a ridiculous thing to say, but it's true. It's how it makes me feel. I feel like I'm I feel like I'm I'm doing something. You know, I feel like I'm on a ride. I'm not I'm not just riding a motorbike. I, I, and that's not saying the GS is boring because it's not. I, I love that bike. I have loads of fun on it. But this has just got a, a different vibe to it. Would I have one over the GS? Mm, probably not, not at the moment, no. Because to me, the GS just has that versatility. It's that full on versatility you get with it. You, you go anywhere, do anything, carry loads of kit with you. This is just a bit more of an effort if you want to, you kind of like, want to carry luggage on this, you know, you, you haven't got the back box. So I suppose you could get a back box if you wanted, but it's not as comfortable a seating position. It's all those little things, you know? But it's, it's great fun. I'm enjoying it. Those brake. Oh, should have gone to second. Oh, I mucked that corner up completely. That's because I was in fourth. What an idiot. But the brakes are lovely. Oh. Let's get the sport display up. There we go. The turn of speed is impressive. If you need that power for the overtake, just a little twist of the throttle and bang, there it is. No fuss, no mucking about, it's just there. And it pulls and pulls and pulls. With the old 1200 engine, after about sort of six, 7,000 revs, it didn't feel like there was much there. This feels like it pulls right through. Lovely right and sweeping left. I just ate it all up. Absolutely ate it up. Beautiful. Quite hard to see if you're recording or not with these GoPros. I wish they had a, a little light or something at the back here on the top right or top left or both even, it would just be handy. When it's on the helmet like this, I can't I have to keep looking in the mirror to see if the flashy red light is on. And even then it's very small, it's quite hard to see. Oh that delivery, the power delivery is just beautiful with this 1250 engine. Fourth gear is a joy. Oh, that's lovely. It's just absolutely effortless. Oh, we caught up with this traffic now. So what's it like on the motorway? Funny you should say that. We're, we're just a way to come out of the average 50s onto the Nationals on a bit of motorway. Heading in for night duty. So, get ourselves up to, you know, very quickly, you're up to motorway speed. I'm not going to take the mech, just going to sit with traffic. You see that's 70 odd mile an hour. I'll just go with this Mercedes. I don't want to go daft. 
I do get the odd comment about it, so uh, and we all love a comment. But yeah, that, that feels fine. That feels all right. Bit noisy in the lead, but nothing horrendous. It's not unbearable. It's definitely not a motorway muncher. The bike sort of comes alive on the twisty roads, really. Uh, well, there's not much else that can be said about that, really. Uh, <laughs> I'll see you when we get into town for a bit of commuting. Well, as you can see, we're back in the town. Can't see this being any problem at all in the commute. Certainly no wider than the GS, the handlebars feel lower, so it should be easier to get under the wing mirrors. Ah oh, yes, the smell of cannabis. South London. Or just London these days. God, I sound like a money will get. Jeez, I'm oh, sorry. Oh, and here comes the rain. Awesome. Nice work, buses. Nice work. Oh, I love it, I love it, I love it, he does. Honestly, honestly. I need to win the lottery, folks. I'll share some with you, I promise. So what's the main change then between the R1200R and the R1250R? Apart from, obviously, the new 1250 engine, with all its increased horsepower, increased torque and performance. All due to that shift cam technology now. Pass, it's magic. Magic happens inside the engine and it's very good. There you go. That's my technical explanation as to what shift cam technology is. Would you believe it? There's not been that much traffic. I've not had to nick one power one as much, but it's really not an issue at all on this. No dramas at all. The bike seems to have had a lot of attention from people on the way in, whether that's just a ridiculous sight of a large fat man sat on a small bike, or if people are genuinely taken by the paint scheme, I don't know. But it certainly gets attention. Yeah, don't worry, I just nodded straight at you in your face and you blanked me. Thanks very much. Lots of people saying in the comments that the nod is still alive and well up with them, which is great to hear. I think it is generally just down in London, to be honest. I can see why people are people are trying to stay alive on the road. They're concentrating on the road and not in some fat bearded bloke nodding frantically at them. Fair one. So folks, that's me. Almost in to work. And what do I think of the 2019 BMW R? 1250R. Obviously this is just a first ride. I have got this for a good week or two and I'm heading to Wales on Monday after work, bank holiday Monday. So I'm going to be doing a bit of a sort of four or five day trip down there with Nikki, but I'm going to ride the bike there. I'm hoping, if possible, to meet a few of you along the way. So it would have, this would have been done and dusted by the time you watch this vid. But if you're on the Patreon, if you're a clan person, You'll know all about it, because I would have posted up. One of the benefits. And what do I think? I like it. I really like it. For me personally, because I use a bike every single day, I couldn't have this as my only bike. Well, I could, but I wouldn't. Just the practicalities of the bigger GS. That would swathe me to it, and it fits me better at six foot three, big fat lump. But this is a good bike. Take one for a test ride, folks. Mm, knit one per one. God, I love this engine. So, with an initial ride, folks. I really am impressed. I'm loving this. I love this engine. It's just awesome. I wish I could afford a 1250 GS. It is a stonking engine. And on this smaller, lighter chassis, wow, it's got even more power. So I wholeheartedly, wholeheartedly 
recommend you get yourself along to your local BMW dealership and take one of these for a spin. Right, let's have a look at this baby. Montage time! Right then, gloves are going on. Notice the gloves are going on. Blimey, after the comments on the last time I did that. Shush. It's like I had uh, skinned your firstborns alive. The fact I didn't wear gloves. Anyway. Well, folks, I'm heading home now. Time for bed. Hope you've enjoyed this first ride impressions vid of the BMW R1250. There's at least one more vid coming, possibly two. We're going to hit the road off to Wales. All right, folks, thanks again for all your support. All you new subscribers, welcome. All you existing and long-standing subscribers, I salute you. All you clans people over on Patreon, what can I say other than you are awesome? All right, folks, look after yourselves. Get on out there, enjoy life, but remember, live your life.